Good afternoon. I've selected an urgent question uh, to begin business with today, and so as a consequence, decision time will be at 5.15 later this afternoon. So we move to the urgent question. Colin Smith. Thank you, President Officer, to ask the Scottish Government what its response is to reports that hundreds of drivers were stranded overnight on the M74. Minister Hamza Youssef. Uh, can I, Presiding Officer, firstly repeat uh, on record my apology to any driver who was stranded last night in hours uh, of queuing, particularly on the M74. That would have been a deeply unpleasant experience, certainly not one that I would have liked to have been in, and I imagine nobody here uh, across this chamber. So let me firstly uh, put on record my apology for that. Uh, in terms of context of the wider uh, trunk road network, it's worth pointing out that the majority of the trunk road network, of course, despite extremely challenging weather, was moving. Uh, and uh, clearly, though, we had issues on the M74, as the member highlights. At 6 p.m., seven HGVs on the M74 skidded and came to a halt southbound, blocking all three lanes and closing the road. Uh, over 15 gritters and two fast tracks were uh, resourced uh, and uh, brought to Junction 9 uh, at the southbound on the M74 uh, and uh, also uh, um, deployed salt treatments and pre-treatments uh, undertaken uh, at that time. Uh, lane 3 uh, of the road was opened around 8pm, uh, enabling traffic to slowly pass the blockage. Uh, traffic uh, followed in gritters in convoys. However, of course, uh, the weather persisted. Snowfall continued to be challenging. Uh, we saw a number of HGVs continue to lose control, continue to lose traction. At 9 p.m., a further four HGVs involved in incidents at 2 a.m. in the morning on the M74. Uh, preparations were put in place. Appropriate travel warnings were issued. 162 gritters were patrolling uh, last night. However, localised issues, uh, often relating, as I've said, to HGVs losing traction, uh, persisted. Uh, looking ahead, we now have uh, the Met Office who have confirmed an amber warning for the south and southwest uh, of Scotland for this evening. I have just come off the phone with Police Scotland, who correspondingly they have advised that they will be upgrading their travel warning from a stage three to a stage four. That in practice means that all travel should be avoided on those parts of the trunk road affected by the amber warning, namely south and southwest of Scotland for the duration of the amber warning. Of course, more information on this will be released shortly. Can I conclude, presiding officer, by thanking drivers for their patience, but also thanking Police Scotland, the Emergency Services, Mountain Rescue, uh, the Gritters, uh, Council staff, Transport Scotland staff, and others who worked tirelessly throughout the night to help us recover the situation as best as we could. Our focus now is on the challenging weather ahead and ensuring that we can keep Scotland moving. Colin Smith. Thank you, President Officer. Can I thank the Minister for that answer? Can I also echo his thanks to our emergency services, winter service workers, but also the volunteers of Moffat Mountain Rescue Team for their heroic efforts last evening, trying to keep the M74 open and supporting those drivers who were stranded. In December, the Minister said in response to a parliamentary question that the winter service capability has never been higher. Is the Minister absolutely confident that everything possible was done and all resources needed were deployed on the M74 to try to keep the motorway open or to prevent traffic access in the stretch of the road that was blocked, a stretch that I have to say is well known for being badly affected during adverse weather. <coughs> and given the amber warning that's now in place that the Minister mentions, what specific lessons have been learned to ensure we don't have a repeat of stranded drivers on the motorway this evening? Can I thank Colin uh, Smith for the uh, tone of his question and, and think for uh, absolutely making the point that for every weather event that we have, we must learn uh, the lessons of that. But what I would say is what we faced was uh, extremely challenging weather that we actually haven't seen in Scotland for a number of years in the sense of the widespread nature of that snow, the persistence of it, and even some of the depth uh, of that uh, snow. So like I said in my previous answer, yes, preparations were made, 162 gritters uh, which you can see from our live gritter tracker were deployed uh, last night. Uh, in terms of the amber warning and, and, and looking ahead, uh, what I would say is we will certainly do everything in our power, coordinating with our partners, Police Scotland uh, primarily, but of course with local authorities uh, and others to ensure we have the resources and strategic locations. But we are facing, on top of the amber warning, of course, uh, wider yellow warnings uh, in terms of uh, snow and ice uh, right across the country. So we are going to be uh, tested 
uh, undoubtedly uh, to our limit. And that's why I believe Police Scotland have taken the decision uh, that they have uh, to raise their travel advice warning from a stage three to a stage four. We'll also be appealing uh, to drivers, uh, of course, as well, to heed the warning, which is avoid uh, all travel on those parts of the trunk road network uh, uh, affected by the amber warning. We'll also be asking drivers in other parts of the country, of course, that are traveling to check the Traffic Scotland website, plan their journey ahead, and importantly, uh, drive to the conditions. Colin Smith. Thank you, President Officer. The Minister will know that the, the adverse weather, of course, also impacts on roads maintained by our local authorities, and they're often used as alternatives to motorways when they're closed. This week, council after council from the north of Scotland to the south have reported that they've already overspent their winter maintenance budgets for this year. Can the Minister tell us what assessment has been made by the Scottish Government of the effect of cuts to councils on the level of winter maintenance budgets? And does the Minister accept that these cuts will impact on the extent to which our councils can keep Scotland moving and the public safe on our roads and pavements during the current adverse weather? Minister. Uh, can I say to the member that, uh, again, we have to look at this in the context uh, of uh, each winter that passes by. So in some winters, of course, local authorities might have underspent the winter budget because they might have had a milder winter. Clearly, this one is a challenging winter and therefore overspent. What I've said this morning in answer to questions that have been asked by the media on this specific question is that my door is clearly open. In fact, we're proactively contacting COSLA to speak to those local authorities that have uh, particularly faced the effects of a challenging winter thus far and I'll continue dialogue with them to see where we can assist to give some reassurance to the member uh, let me say that we have plenty on salt uh, plenty of salt on stock and in order we have more st salt uh, in stock in fact now than we use the entire uh, last winter so there are resources there that can be deployed can be shared whether that's through mutual aid uh, or indeed uh, other mechanisms I don't, won't go into discussions around uh, the financial settlement for local authorities for the 2018-19 budget. I'm sure that will come up in uh, debate later uh, this afternoon. But certainly when it comes to the conversation with local authorities, we work closely with them. Uh, they know my door is open and we'll be proactively contacting COSLA. Joan McAlpine. Uh, thank you. Um, I noted this morning that a uh, Dumfries truck driver who was caught up in the snowdrift on the M74 called BBC Radio Scotland to praise the emergency services and the snow ploughs he saw and said that they were working flat out to address the situation and help motorists. Can the Scottish Government set out what discussions with officials and stakeholders took place once the Met Office issued an amber warning for snow and ice across Scotland and what preparations were put in place to best address these weather warnings? Minister. Well, I think that is an important point. Uh, clearly, at the end of last week, we knew from the Met Office, who are embedded within our control centre at Queensferry, uh, that we'd be getting severely ch challenging weather uh, uh, this week uh, and therefore of course we had the multi-agency response team uh, set up as well as uh, Scottish Government resilience calls that took place which bring in all stakeholders uh, involved uh, in, in tackling uh, the extremely challenging uh, weather including of course uh, local authorities but the member is absolutely right uh, or indeed the caller uh, for this uh, to this radio program is absolutely right to highlight the efforts uh, of those involved in uh, winter resilience uh, the gritters are a good example they work on Christmas Day on New Year's Day if needed, they were absolutely flat out. 162 uh, out uh, last night, uh, working all hours of the day. I received messages from Transport Scotland officials at one in the morning, four in the morning, six in the morning, working overnight in the early hours of the morning. Now, clearly, of course, lessons should be learnt, though. None of us want to see the scenes we saw last night repeated elsewhere, and therefore that's why I believe uh, Police Scotland have taken uh, the step that they have to uh, upgrade their travel advice warning. Oliver Mundell. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I put on record uh, my uh, thanks as well to uh, local emergency services and the mountain rescue team? Given the local police had advised against all but essential travel, can the Minister say if any consideration was given to putting an advanced closure or HGV restrictions on place, in place on the M74 as conditions deteriorated yesterday? Minister. Uh, of course, all options would have been considered. The difficulty with road closures, on, uh, if we take, for example, the amber warning that we're facing this evening, and we're talking about a number of trunk roads that could be affected, the, 70, uh, the 74, uh, the M77, <coughs> the M75, uh, to close those entire trunk roads, uh, the police have told me this afternoon, would require huge amounts of, of resource. And of course, all you would end up doing in some respects is diverting that traffic uh, onto local roads, which could increase 
uh, uh, police uh, resource. So to answer the question directly, of course, all options would have absolutely uh, been considered. But I go back to my, my response to, to Colin Smith, which was uh, that, uh, of course, every weather event that we have, we should learn the lessons of that. It would be folly for me uh, to say that we shouldn't learn lessons. Of course, we should learn lessons from uh, that very unpleasant experience that people would have had uh, on the M74 uh, last night. But we have to strike a balance here. Uh, I'm not saying that road closures will not happen. The police have said that that's always an option they'll look at uh, tonight. Uh, there might be very localised road closures. Uh, but again, they're very aware that if they do that, uh, they may well shift the pressure onto local roads, which may want to be avoided. But it remains an option. Uh, but the clear advice from Police Scotland, which uh, we're releasing more information on, is that this has now been upgraded to stage four warning, which means that uh, all travel should be avoided uh, by tho uh, on, on those areas uh, of the trunk road network that are affected by the amber warning uh, and indeed for the duration of the amber warning. And Mike Rumbles. <clears throat> Aberdeenshire Council has spent its winter maintenance budget and it has also said that it will spend all of its winter reserve funds. Does the minister not see that in these conditions it would be helpful if he could speak to his colleague, the finance minister, to see if funds could be made available in the coming budget that we're about to debate in this parliament to assist our councils that are in need that have spent their winter maintenance funds and keep our traffic and people moving? Minister. And my understanding is from speaking to my officials that we've not necessarily had a proactive uh, approach uh, from any local authority uh, in terms of, of the winter uh, budgets. But like I was saying in my earlier answer, some winters, of course, they'll underspend, some they'll overspend. I completely understand where local authorities may well have been stretched. Uh, this winter is uh, for them, of course, to decide how to, to use their budgets, but my door will be open to a conversation. I've instructed already officials to proactively uh, contact uh, COSLA to have those discussions. There are, of course, mechanisms in place for emergency situations. The member will be aware of the Bellwyn uh, scheme and, and so on and so forth uh, that had been used previously for flooding. Uh, but uh, we'll have that conversation with local authorities and, as I say, I'll keep a very open mind uh, to that. There is plenty of salt on stock, so therefore resources uh, can be shared if any local authority is feeling like it's uh, needing more salt on stock and doesn't have the uh, financial resource to procure that. Thank you. That concludes our urgent question. Apologies to those members who couldn't get in. If you have any urgent constituency issues, I'm sure you could raise them tomorrow. There'll be opportunities.